Hello and welcome to Colin Bradley Artcast. I'm Stephen Bradley. And I'm Colin Bradley. How are you doing, Dad? I'm doing well, Steve, yeah. A little bit of progress this week. Well, this fortnight. We didn't do it last week, did we? Yes, it's, it's beginning to get there. Still a lot of banging and I have to work between bangs and sores and all things going on. But it's, it's coming together, beginning to come together now. That's the important thing. Work, oh, that's good to hear. That's good to hear. Um, yes, we took a break last week. Uh, I wasn't feeling too well. We had a bit of a cold. Um, Elowin, well, we thought Elowin came down with it and then she gave it to us. But I think actually Mims uh, got a cold uh, and then she gave it to Elowin and then Elowin gave it to me. So I think we all just we all just had colds that week. And um yeah, I wasn't feeling really too up for it. It wouldn't have made a very good podcast, me just no. sipping on a on a drink and just being all miserable. <laughs> um but uh yeah, no, I'm fine this week. I was I was fine a few days later. So um yes, thanks for everyone for the well wishes and everything last week. Um moving on to this week, we've got a new picture to show everyone because it's been a couple of weeks anyway. So you've managed to get another picture done. Um, talk to me about this one, Dad. Yes, the bear. Well, as you know, that was um, uh, sent. Well, it wasn't sent. It, it was uh, suggested uh, that we look at uh, Dan's website, where he put uh, a lot of uh, wildlife pictures on and landscape pictures. And very good too. He's a natural uh, photographer, isn't it? What do they call him? A wildlife photographer. And uh, as well as a pastel artist, and he uh, he obviously knows his angles because they they were very good. And so I went through it and I found this particular one, the bear. Uh, I just love the attitude. It, it, it was just a very la- a lazy bear, I think we could call it, relaxing. And uh, I'd only done one before, if you remember, I, I did a mother and baby a few years ago now. Uh, and that went down well, but this one was very special. I did it on pastel matte paper. I chose the um, the sand coloured pastel matte paper. I thought it'd been ideal for it, and it it proved to be the case. But I want to talk about the sand coloured paper, Steve, because um, it, it's um, it's a unique product. That uh, and um, anyway, I'll, we'll cut, let me come back to that. If I forget, prompt me. But I wanted to do it on that, and um, I was particularly interested in the uh, setup for it. It was on a, um, a grassy plain, I suppose, or certainly a grassy area, uh, which receded right back. There was nothing else in it. It was just grass. So it had been taken, obviously, from a slightly elevated position. And I thought, well, this is going to be very interesting to do. I wasn't really sure how I was going to do it, but I know I've done something like it before, so I knew that we could we can get away with it. If when you've got to produce a producer, a foreground, and you once, as I've said many times before, if you put uh, paws or feet in, then you've got to put something uh, uh, appertaining to that. You can't just do it in a fog. And so that meant, and it, it, right in the foreground, that's got to be quite detailed, uh, which, is, as you can see, it, uh, it turned out well. And then you've got to recede that. And that's not easy to do, because you've got to imagine that you're, in, you know, with the, the field of, um, what do they call that? Depth of field, I think it's called, isn't it? Depth of field in photography, where you have... Uh, the, the main subjects in the uh, in, in frame um, as detail, and then you pull back on that, and uh, that's a very popular and very good thing uh, to, in, in photographs. So you've got to reproduce that as a um, you know an artwork, because otherwise you won't. Well, people know this. You if you try to put too much detail in it, you lose the essence of the picture which is in this case the brown bear so that was the first obstacle I knew that I was going to come across 
and uh, I think one of the, one of the problems with this is that however good you are at doing the picture, and uh, it turned out very well, it, it will fall foul if you don't put the background and make that work. So it, it, in an artist's mind, you have that all the time. If you have a foggy background and you, you don't have to worry about it, then uh, I've done so many of those that I can do them um, in the sleep. But these tax you all the time because you think as you're doing the picture I've got to do this I've got to make this background work so you put a lot of work into it um, which I did on the bear and uh, but fortunately it came off as, as well as I thought it would do uh, so I was pleased with that excellent excellent well as you mentioned this is one of Dan's photographs and Dan is one of our members and at the end of the show we'll talk about how you can find dan's work um because he has kindly donated uh a couple of oh, well a few portfolios of his photographs to um everyone to look at so we'll talk about that at the end you mentioned that as well that this is an angle that you wouldn't normally well i wouldn't say you wouldn't normally i'd say you haven't done one a picture of this particular kind of angle before it looks a little bit challenging it's like something different mm. because usually you'd be sort of on on like eye level with the animal right. and therefore you could sort of see a clear shadow um mm. beneath but the lighting in this one is there isn't a, an obvious light and shadow there's it, it looks a bit more subtle than that mm. absolutely uh, but this is what attracts me to it steve you know me of late, I'm looking at um, unusual pictures, pictures that uh, move away from the traditional, and I've got a few more coming up, I tell you, which are, are going to be in the same vein. Um, I think that what's, a, what's attracting me now is something that's going to be a challenge. And You know, I've always said that you should look for challenges, and uh, when you get to the situation I'm in now where I can be pick and choosy of what I do, I've got a good stack of pictures behind me for for um, animals and landscape. So I can now um, indulge myself really in the, something different. And this is the last few I've done, as you know, have been like that. And this is one of them. And it that's the reason, though, that we had the, the, um, the grass area going all the way back because had I been eye level with the bear then you'd have had some uh, something in the background you'd had trees or you'd have had sky even in the background and it wouldn't have you couldn't have done the same thing then you couldn't have made that uh, you know in, in the, uh, the style that I did it uh, so that's what attracted me but also what attracted me was the fur I knew that the fur of the of this bear was particularly challenging, and it, it turned out to be exactly that. I'd like to now bring in, if I can, the, the sand colour paper, which I said. Uh, now, one of the things with the sand colour paper, and more so than any of the other pastel note papers, it takes a lot of filling up. You've got to work very hard at it. Anybody who is starting out. I don't suggest they start out with the same colour paper, not the same colour pastel matte paper anyway, because it, it it's you've got to fill the paper up. And when you do fill it up, you get fantastic results. But sometimes it's not easy. The benefit you've got, though, is that you can, uh, because of the difficulty of filling the paper up, it seems to have more grip there when you want to put light over dark. So you've got another advantage there. And this was very obvious with this bear. I mean, when you look at the, um, the fur, particularly, and, and another thing I'll mention too, normally, as you know, I would start with the head, wouldn't I? That's the first thing I would do. Not in this case. Because it was, it was light, I knew that the fur was going to be the difficult bit. The head, not so much so, because I've done so many 
animal faces and the heads and so on. I, I, I knew that I'd be okay with that. But the fur was challenging. And uh, it turned out to be exactly that. Because what you've got to do is split that down into base colours. Uh, you've got to put the base colours on, which are apt, uh, knowing, as I do, the difficulty you've got with the sand colour paper. So you've got to put that on and you've got to make that... Uh, um, you've got to make it register. That's the best word I can describe. You can't just put it on and hope that all the other colours are going to fill it in. It's got to register. Then you've got the, the in-between colours, colours between the uh, base colours you're putting on, which are generally lighter colours, and, and the darker colours that are going to go on at the end. So you've got three lots of um, applications, really, on that uh, fur. But the end result is stunning. Very, very, very interesting. And I'm sure people, when they look at that, knowing what I've just said, they would see that as being, wow, that's something else. So uh, interesting, I think. This, uh, this is what makes, I think, my job particularly good because now, because I'm, I'm having to find colours, and people can hear this, uh, my narration very often, but what am I going to do now? I've got this to do, and I'm not really sure this is going to work. Do you know what I mean? It always seems to work. But I have that sort of little doubt creeping in. And I think this is interesting. It must be fascinating for people watching it. Hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And um, this kind of colour combination, I think people have seen in, in some of your animals, that might not be quite so new to them. But what you were saying about adding light over dark, did you find that when you were doing this picture then you had... A little bit more flexibility mm. with um, putting the light over dark the section that i'm particularly thinking of is the long fur uh, it's sort of on the right hand side it looks to have a lot of light over dark is that something that you notice then particularly with this project yes well i knew it was going to happen because i've um, had quite a lot of experience now with the sand color paper i've said before it's probably my favorite of the of the uh, colors not, um, I'm not knocking the, the dark grey, which I also like very much, but it wouldn't have worked so well with the dark grey. It's got to have that uh, base colour of sand for the uh, type of picture we're doing. Um, and you could have done it with sand. And that's, uh, could have done it with the grey, but the sand was of the obvious choice. Now, because I knew what I was going to be faced with, then I, I, uh, I already had the idea of building up the base colours. The problem, though, there is, although I've said you can put light over dark, one of the things you have to remember is you can't pancake too much light colour on because even when you put the dark colours on, you're beginning to get too much colour on there, too much base. Then when you come to put the light colours back on again, it doesn't register. So there's a, there's a happy balance between uh, putting just enough base colour to fill the paper up uh, and then the intermediary colours go on. And again, you've got to be, um, you've got to be careful not to overdo them. And then you've got the darker colours go on and once they go on, so you've got three lots of, um, of applications really. And then you put the light back on top of it but that won't work if you've already put too much colour on. So it's a it's a very challenging thing to do, but I don't think I could have done any better than I've actually done with that picture. What I've found with that particular picture uh, is the sense of realism you get when you look at that. You know, I mean, I, I did study the photograph after I finished the picture, and the photograph doesn't hold a candle to the actual finished picture in terms of um, feel. Do you know what I mean by feel? The, the, the feel that you're actually seeing or witnessing reality there. And that's not, in, that's not to say that I put every hair in and every tiny little nuance. I don't do that. 
but the, the feeling of reality, the feel that uh, it's a real bear. And, I, and when you see, people won't be able to see the original, but if you saw the original, you almost touch it and want to, I wouldn't want to stroke a bear, but that's the sort of feel you want to get. You know, you think, oh, gosh, this looks so touchable. And I don't think it comes off as well with prints and uh, perhaps on more on the television, though. When they see the, the actual footage, because that's when I probably noticed it more than ever, when you saw the footage, you do see that uh, um, feel. You get that feeling. So uh, there's a lot to look forward to with that particular picture. Yeah, I'd say. That's, I'd say that sounds excellent. And so given everything that we've talked about, everything that you've said about this picture, what level um, difficulty have you, have well, you put this one as? Well, I've, most of the pictures I'm doing now are really um, ideal for advanced members. But I would still put it into intermediate range because I want people to do it. You see, if I say it's an advanced picture, they oh, I'm not going to do it then. No, that's too hard for me. So I think that uh, my way of thinking is that if I say it's uh, intermediate, people will have a go at it and they'll make a reasonable job of it, but they'll learn so much because of it. Maybe even to, oh, I've put too much colour on or I haven't put enough colour on or whatever. It's a learning curve. And this is what we're all about, really. We're trying to teach people. Um, but someone who's got um, knowledge of the paper and of the uh, maybe done one or two pictures of mine uh, would be able to say that that's an advanced picture. And uh, so I think it, uh, certainly, certainly not a beginner's, though. There's no way a beginner would be able to get anywhere near that. I wouldn't want to do that one. I think we've got enough beginners' pictures, you know. I'm not producing really any more at the moment because I think there is enough there, hundreds really, of, of pe pictures that they can do. But we want to move people on. I want to move people on to, to do bigger and better things. And uh, I'm very lucky really still having um, the ability to be able to, to push myself into doing these pictures. I've got some, uh, if, you, if I could show you the pictures that I've got already lined up, that uh, you'll think, wow, really? And they're all going to be on pastel note paper. Or, or you art. I'm going to bring a couple of you arts as well, but it's very similar to pastel note. If I was being honest, I think you art might even be easier than the sand colour pastel map. You know, you've got a sand colour. Uh, it's a bit lighter, but you've got a sand colour UART paper uh, that I actually like. That's my favourite of that paper. And that is, um, I think it probably would be easier, more forgiving, should I say, than the pastel map. But the end result would definitely be pastel map would be the better one. That's only my opinion, and other people might. But it's a good, it's a good alternative. I mean, people in the states who couldn't get hold of pastel that have got you art. It's going to work just as well on that. Mm, good to know. Yeah, it's a good, it's a good comparable product. So, um, thanks for that, Dad. This is going to be a great one. I look forward to releasing that one soon. Um, I hope everyone is looking forward to this kind of picture. As we mentioned, it's uh, from a photograph by Dan, one of our members. And um, we said we'd mention how to look at his portfolios. And if you go to colinbradleyart.com and at the top, there is now a, a, a separate menu item called reference photos. So if you click on that, you'll be able to read about Dan, visit his website. And we've also linked um, his portfolios there. So you can click on those. He is very kindly said that um, they are completely free to download and they're copyright free. So um, you don't have to give him any credit, although I'm sure he would be very grateful if you did uh, reference that well, it was one of his photos um, and perhaps link back to his site if you'd like. 
Um, but they're all high resolution downloads um, and you can get access to them by visiting our website. So thank you so much, Dan. I know a lot of our members already have showed their gratitude and seen a lot of pictures that they'd like to do. And he is going to be adding to those over time as well. So keep an eye on those, maybe bookmark those portfolios because there are going to be new pictures going up on there as well. So thank you, Dan. Uh, and thank you, Dad, for talking about this picture. Look forward to chatting with you next week. You've got another one lined up, you were saying to me before we started recording. You don't have to say what it is, but you've got another one ready. Yes, I have. Um, I've got, uh, I'm, I'm halfway through the next one. I won't tell you what it is. I told you what it is, but I won't tell the viewers what it is. But it's one I've done before, not one I've done before, a subject I've done before. Uh, I did hesitate because I don't know. I've done a few of these now, and I think, well, um, I still think, again, I haven't done one on the customer paper, sand-coloured customer paper, knowing, knowing what I've just said about it, and it's proving to be the same difficulty uh, again, but uh, I know it's going to turn out well. But this time, we've got a very, very dark background kind of reminiscent of a shadow picture but it's not shadow picture it's a very dark background and i've got and the next one i've got uh, my i've got i've got another one which is exactly the same again subjects i've already done before um and a very very dark background but i do quite like these dark backgrounds I've done a couple recently i can't remember one recently i did where i had a very dark background there's something about them they 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 push the subject forward and uh so i do like so anyway this is going to come off um within i'm i'll finish it probably over the weekend or early next week so i'll send it to you and then we can we can have a little chat about it next week that sounds lovely that sounds great okay well fingers crossed you're able to carry on working without all the building works happening um sure everyone is hoping that it isn't uh too busy there so that you can get the work done so that they can see your picture next week <laughs> well i managed to squeeze it in this is the thing and sometimes i listen i think i've not got any banging i can't hear any so i i take a chance it hasn't it hasn't uh, put me off yet i haven't found that halfway through a, you know suddenly you get a big bang or something soaring going on um, so I'm quite lucky. I'm at the top of the house, and this is all a bit going at the bottom of the house. So I've got mm. um, a floor between us, and uh, <laughs> our house is in a, in a late Victorian, early Warden. Ward, Ward, uh, Warden, how? Wardian? Wardian? Yes. yes. Uh, 1902. <laughs> so it's just right on the right on the um, the border line there. Um, so it's. A built a nice strong you know solid build building so uh, i'm very lucky there we don't get to too many uh, problems in that respect but I'll, I'll i'll carry on working between between my you know the bangs and so on what's going on excellent oh. excellent <laughs> Lovely. All right. Well, we'll leave it there for this week. Thank you everyone for listening and for watching. I'm Stephen Bradley. And I'm Colin Bradley. Enjoy. Enjoy. Part of your hair sticking up on that side. That's it. That's it. Gone. No, it's gone. Come back again, mate. <laughs> Hello and welcome to Colin Bradley Artcast. I'm. You alright there? <laughs> I, wasn't, I wasn't ready, was I? <laughs> <laughs>